Sofyan, thank you so much for joining us today. And the first question I would like to ask you is about uh, election misinformation and the landscape that you see this time, this time in the U.S. election uh, 2024. So, can you tell us some of the most, uh, some of the examples that have stood out for you? Thank you, Ariba. Thank you, Moiz. Um, I think that uh, I think what's more important than uh, than the examples of misinformation uh, in the U.S. election is to understand that the idea of fake news or the concept of fake news and misinformation has now become kind of in itself a major issue uh, in the um, electoral contest. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you go back maybe 10 years ago or 15 years ago, um, these terms, uh, misinformation, disinformation, fake news, were actually not that widely used uh, in uh, American politics. Even though, of course, candidates in the past have lied as well uh, about many things, um, you know, I mean, for example, uh, George Bush uh, in the run-up to the Iraq war hmm. uh, and uh, after the Iraq war was launched, uh, obviously peddled uh, a lot of what we would now call misinformation about weapons of mass destruction and other uh, so-called reasons for uh, the invasion of Iraq. Um, if you go back even further to Lyndon Baines Johnson, um, during the Vietnam War, there was a lot of misinformation um, which was, uh, you know, mainstream uh, in the U.S. about the causes of the Vietnam War and justifications for that war. And then there are many other uh, examples of misinformation, but it was not really called misinformation or fake news until quite recently. And uh, the rise of these terms actually coincides with the rise of Donald Trump, um, who uh, in the United States is a, uh, considered to be uh, the uh, politician, leader, presidential candidate, president, uh, who has told more untruths than any other political figure in U.S. history. Um, and that's at least the liberal, progressive, left-wing, democratic narrative about him. Whether that's really true in an objective sense is difficult to, to measure. Uh, but the terms uh, fake news and disinformation, misinformation are intrinsically linked to him and his political rise and um, you know, his, uh, the shadow that he's cast over American politics for the last decade. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Nazreen Sufyan has told you that the examples are more than that we focus on this idea that fake news ki jo, uh, 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 terms are disinformation, misinformation and uh, these are election ke context mein abhi recently aana shuru hui hai, used in the recent period. In the past few years, when Bush and Lyndon Johnson uh, the election के लिए लड़ रहे थे तो वो भी झूठ बोलते थे और वो भी fake news फैलाते थे लेकिन तब ये terms मौजूद नहीं थी और ये जो सारी language है fake news के बारे में बात करने की ये Donald Trump के साथ साथ ही introduce हुई है U.S. election politics में especially क्योंकि liberal Democrats का मानना है कि Donald Trump है जो जिन्होंने आज तक की history में सबसे ज़्यादा झूठ बोला है लेकिन इस बात में सच है या झूठ किस हद तक ये बात सच है ये इसका तायुन तभी हो सकता है जब हम इसको properly study करें तो सुफियान this brings me to my next question obviously that Elon Musk has put in a lot of money not only money but also a lot of influence and power towards helping Donald Trump especially because he's also running X and he has the power to shape people's opinions and conceptions as they see uh, the content on X. So uh, what do you think, the, what kind of impact does this have on the information landscape in America in the long term? So I think uh, there are a couple of things that, uh, first to just uh, uh, maybe to, to bridge uh, my previous answer with this one, uh, Donald Trump in this particular election cycle has um, been accused mostly of um, lying about uh, immigration uh, the behavior of immigrants. Uh, I think we all remember uh, his, um, you know, much lampooned uh, statement that they're eating the cats, they're eating the cats and dogs or whatever, mm -hmm. eating the pets in um, in Springfield, Illinois. I yeah. think it was. Um, and so a lot of this is about a lot of the uh, controversy around uh, Donald Trump and misinformation is related to uh, immigration, the numbers of immigrants coming in, how many illegal immigrants are coming in, how many of them are in crime how many of them were criminals and released from jails, and all of that. Now, a lot of those mistruths are actually being, um, or a lot of those mistruths, exaggerations, whatever, are actually being repeated by Elon Musk. Hmm. And Elon Musk has entered the fray um, in a very big way in the last uh, month or two. 
Uh, he is one of the biggest donors, if not the single largest donor, to uh, Donald Trump's campaign. And he himself is campaigning for Trump uh, in the battleground states. And I think that your viewers should know that in the United States, the majority of states, maybe 42 or 43 states, mm. can very predictably be assigned to one of the two major political parties Absolutely. or the other. And there are only uh, seven, eight, six states where the um, result uh, is really a toss-up. People don't know who's going to win those states. Yeah. Um, and each year or each election cycle, the result is somewhat different. Mm. Um, it, and again, your viewers may not know this, but most of those states are states where there's a big rural-urban divide mm. in which the rural areas generally vote for the Republicans and the uh, urban areas generally vote for the Democrats. Um, so, uh, so basically, these are states with mixed uh, demographics. Uh, with mixed demographics. Um, so, um, the the thing is, is that uh, Elon Musk is a unique figure because he is, uh, you know, he used to actually be uh, a figure who was very respected on the left, um, very respected by Democrats, um, because of his championing of uh, science and technology and environmental causes. I mean, Tesla is. Uh, one of the world's largest manufacturers of electric vehicles, and elect the entire electric vehicle narrative is very much a, a left a narrative in the U.S. Absolutely. Because a lot of people on the right don't even believe that climate change exists, and you know they don't want anything replacing their um, petrol-fueled cars. Yeah. So Musk was actually a darling of the left, but that has changed very dramatically in the past, um, and now. Uh, he's, uh, you know, considered to be, uh, you know, as bad as Trump or worse than Trump. And uh, the thing is, is that, of course, by purchasing Twitter, mm -hmm. he has gained an enormous kind of asset um, or yeah. weapon when it comes to the, when it comes to spreading information of his choosing. But if you recall, prior to his purchase of Twitter, and there's been a lot of reporting on this, the previous... Uh, ownership or management of Twitter was very uh, much anti-Trump. Yeah. Sufyan, you've been very comprehensive with your replies and uh, I wanted to ask you a question regarding the misinformation campaign. We've spoken about the misinformation that has actually b uh, been a part of the run-up to the elections, but it is being widely anticipated that violence can happen if Donald Trump actually loses the election. So what kind of misinformation trends can we witness after the elections? Well, the other misinformation, other than the misinformation about immigration, is basically, you know, uh, misinformation about misinformation related to who won the 2020 election, because Donald Trump mm -hmm. continues to say that he did not actually lose the 2020 election, that he won the 2020 election. He doesn't always say this. He mostly says it or implies it. Um, and so, the uh, so the the idea is, is that his supporters are not going to believe um, that he's lost the election if in fact right. he does lose, and then they're going to become violent. Um, but I don't think that one can simply predict violence on the day after the election if Donald Trump loses. I think that that would be going too far. Um, but he's definitely charging up the crowds at his rallies mm. and uh, making them feel that there's a chance that the election will be stolen from him yet again. सब्सक्राइब करें और बेल दबाएं ताकि कोई खबर रह न जाए